Hello students, welcome to the second video in the rigid body rotation series. So this is a um, continuation from the previous video. So I hope you did have time to go through that. The previous video was basically just an introduction to the rigid body rotation. So the idea here is you've either gone through that video or you've read through, uh, through your notes and uh, you're ready to try out a few questions to, to, to practice what you've just, uh, just went through. So I hope you did have time to go through the, the question. So we're just going to work out the first question here so that the video is not very long. So um, having gone through it, uh, let's try to see what you were expected to do. So the first thing is collect all the, the information that the question gives you. So you want to uh, just get everything, all the details that the question uh, outlined. So the force is given to us as 2.2 Newtons. Then apart from that, we also have, um, uh, the mass of the solid cylinder. So the mass of the solid cylinder is given to us as 52 kgs. So the, the, the small letter T here just means that this is a tangential force. So I hope, I hope you know that. So then we have um, the radius that has a radius of, so the radius of the, of the solid disc is given to us as 32 uh, centimeters. So apart from that, um, A says, how long does it take to accelerate the disc uh, rotating about its axis from rest to 210 revolutions per minute? So it has to accelerate from an initial velocity of zero, angular velocity that is, to a final angular velocity of 210 revolutions per minute. Okay, so want to find how long it takes to do this. Now, by default, when you look at a question like this, and then you want to find time given the velocities. So in circular motion, the default formulas you want to use or the initial formulas you want to use are basically these equations. But then just when you look at this, like for example, just this equation, you notice that you don't know what this angular acceleration is. But if you knew what the angular acceleration is, you'd easily find what the time is. So then you ask yourself, okay, is there another equation that can work to give you the time directly? or a different equation that relates uh, the sum of the quantities you're given here to, to time would be this equation. But then you realize the same thing. You also don't know what, what the acceleration is. And here where you also don't know what the, uh, the theta is. So because of that, it becomes important for us first to try to find the acceleration, the angular acceleration. Now, we observe that we're given the the force and the, the radius, including the mass. So because of that, we're going to relate, uh, we're going to find an equation that relates force and acceleration. And that comes from torque. So we know to say in circular motion, torque, not, yeah, in circular motion, torque is given as the product of force, the tangential force times the radius, which is also equal to the moment of inertia of the particular object times the angular acceleration, okay? Now, if you don't know how this expression uh, uh, comes up and you want to see how that comes up, you can quickly just uh, check the description. Uh, I'll leave a link to my introduction video where I showed how this comes up. So you can look at it. All right, so from here, I want to just relate these two parts. So because I, I, I see I'm given the force, I'm given the radius, uh, all I want to see is, like, can I find acceleration? I only need the moment of inertia. So the moment of inertia is particular to a, sh a specific shape. In this case, uh, the question specifies that we're dealing with uh, a, solid, uh, a solid disc. So for a solid disc, so this is um, for a solid disc. So what we notice is the moment of inertia I, I for a solid disc is given by half, m r squared. So this expression now becomes uh, this r is equals to half m r squared alpha. So from here, uh, since we want to find the angular acceleration, we can make alpha the subject of the formula. So this becomes two um, f t r over m r squared is equals to alpha. So here then you can notice that the acceleration cancels out from, uh, from the numerator. 
we then remain with two ft over two not there's not two in the denominator over m r this is what gives us the angular acceleration so here now it's just substitution so the angular acceleration alpha is 2 multiplying 2.2 .2 over the mass is given as a uh, 52 kgs times the radius is given as 32 centimeters which becomes 0 0.32 in meters when you work this one out we get the angular acceleration as 0 0.264 radians per second squared now we found our our angular acceleration the next part is to now find the time so we recall we're given the initial velocity as zero the final velocity is given to us as 210 revolutions per minute so since our time is in seconds we have to convert this so that we have um, uh, the default units so in that case uh, converting this why why we want to convert that it's because our acceleration is in radians our acceleration is uh, 0 0.264 radians per second squared so our acceleration is in radians per second squared but our velocity here is in revolutions per minute so we either convert the acceleration to revolutions per, per minute squared or convert this to radians per second and i think this becomes easy so how we do that, we just multiply this by, so first we convert the revolutions to radians, then we're going to convert the minutes to seconds. So here we're going to multiply with one revolution in the denominator, and then here two pi rad in the numerator. And then here, this is going to be uh, one to the minutes, the minute goes up. And then in the denominator, what we have is going to be the 60 seconds so we notice that if we just keep everything together here this is going to be 210 and then this is just multiplying 2 pi over 60. so this quantity now is in radians per a minute per second i mean so this is now in radians per second. So that's what, that's what we're going to use. Now, how are we going to work that one out? So now we're going to use omega final is equals to omega initial plus alpha t. So we want to find alpha. So uh, the initial is zero. So we now just have omega final is equals to omega t. So one is equals to alpha t, sorry. So we want to find t. So this becomes t is equals to omega final over alpha so here now our omega final remember what we have we're going to use the one converted which was uh 210 multiplying 2 pi divided by 60 and then this is over the acceleration this is 0 0.264 seconds so once you work this one out, you should be able to see that your time comes out as 83.3 seconds. Okay. Now, so that was the first part to find uh, how long it takes to uh, move from, from rest to a velocity of 210 revolutions per minute. The second step is now to find the number of revolutions that it would have turned during this time. Now to do this, we have to use uh, the formula that when in linear motion, it was P is equals to uh, distance over time. So this reduced, this is for, for linear motion. This implied that the displacement was equal to the average speed times the time. So in circular motion now, the angular displacement is theta. Now we're saying it is equal to the average uh angular velocity times the time so i have to emphasize here we're going to use an uh, an average here an average angular velocity so since you want the number of revolutions i'm going to use an omega which is in revolutions so now how does it work well to get the average 
to get omega average, what we have to do is to add them. So we're going to add omega initial plus omega final, and then we're going to divide them by, um, by two. So we just want to, to get the average velocity here. So in this case, okay, it's, it was quite a little bit, a little bit, uh, a little bit okay and a little bit basic because there's no, there's not really that much in terms of, uh, the, the initial one is zero. So even the addition is kind of, uh, um, kind of simple. Okay, so if, if we did this, since our initial is zero plus our final in revolutions per, uh, per minute. So now we want this to be revolutions per second. So to convert, we can just do that very quickly before we continue. So that is 210 revolutions per minute. Uh, of course, this we're just going to multiply this by one minute over the 60 second. So I'm basically just dividing this by 60 second. Okay, so this is now in revolutions per, per second. So divide this by by two. So this is going to give us a, a average. So we notice that this is basically just uh, uh, we can say we can say two ten over one twenty. Okay, so this becomes our average angular velocity, which is revolutions per second. So once we've got that, we go back to our formula. The number of revolutions is our angular velocity, two hundred and ten over one twenty multiplying our time, and that is 83.3 seconds. Okay, so we can try out this very quickly so that we see exactly what, we get, what we're getting. So if we try that, what we have is 210 divided by, divided by 120, we get that, multiply that by 83.3, and you get 145.7, you can say 145.8. So depending on the number of uh, significant figures that you want, uh, this comes out as 145.775, 775, yeah, 775 revolutions. So you can write this, uh, this standard, uh, say, write it to three significant figures, which would come out as 146 revolutions. Okay, so um, this was just basically just an introduction to uh, the first practice question that we're working out. I hope I hope you're able to follow through. Um, in the next in the next video, we're going to work out um, the next question, and hopefully it won't be uh, very long as well. Hope you are able to follow. If you have any any points of concern, just uh, leave a comment in the. In the comment section below and i'll be able to, to get back to you everyone else is able to, to respond to you all right hope you found this helpful see you in the next video